that whoever is able to go and capable of going, that you guys get involved, because this is fantastic. This is awesome. I mean, we are called to make disciples, right? Yes. The next generation, they are on the cusp. They're in a pivotal situation in their lives, okay? Mm -hmm. We can send them out and let the world devour them, or we can give them the strength of Jesus Christ in their lives, and they can make phenomenal gains mm -hmm. in his kingdom, mm -hmm. and that's what this is all about, being kingdom-minded, making sure these kids get the right things that they need in their life. Mm -hmm. Now, if you would, please... Leslie's going to say a few words. The Holy Spirit's been talking to her, and she Amen. wants to bring a few things before I talk about some uh, things the Holy Spirit's telling me to talk to you about. So, here you go. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's good to see all of you. Welcome. If you're new, we love you. Amen. Amen. This church is about love. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. The motto is no perfect people allowed. God loves us all. Amen. Amen. Right? Yes. Yes. So the Spirit, Holy Spirit's been dealing with me on some things about a four-letter word, love. L-O-V-E. And the action of love. So, as I was studying, I want you to turn to Mark if you can. If not, I'm going to read it. Mark 12, 30 and 31 is what I'm going to be reading. And I'm going to be reading out of the Passion Translation. And it says, You are to love the Lord Yahweh, your God, with every passion of your heart, with all the energy of your being, with every thought that is within you, and with all your strength. This is the great and supreme commandment. And the second is this. You must love your neighbor in the same way you love yourself. You will never find a greater commandment than these. Amen? Amen. 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 And this is, you know, and this is Jesus talking. This is Jesus saying this. These are red letters, y'all. This is him talking. So this is something that I personally want to do all the time is be in love. Always. You know, we're emotional people. We're human. People hurt us. They do things. They say things that can really cut us to the core. And what do we do? Do we rely on our emotions? No. no. Why do we not rely on our emotions? The reason is, is because emotions can cause anger, hurt, bitterness. These emotions are not from God. Amen. Okay? Amen. At all. So what do we do? We give it all to God. Okay? We love them. Do we have to like them? Doesn't say it. But we are to love them. Yes. Amen. So I uh, came across a scripture too. Came to me. This is, we're going to turn to Romans 12, verse 9 and 10. All right. This scripture here, y'all, really, really talk to me. Okay. So we're in Romans, and I'm in the Passion Translation. And it says, let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another. And never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. <laughs> wow. Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as a member of one family. Amen. Try to outdo yourself in respect and honor of one another. This really spoke to me because the Lord showed me a vision. And I told Ben about a week ago, and I kind of been battling back and forth. I even talked to my mom about it. It was like I wanted to share, but then I would say, no, I'm not going to share. And then I'd want to share again, and I just, I was like, man, I, I don't know if I want to talk about this. I recognized it. It was the enemy. 
He did not want me to talk about these things about love. But I'm sharing it because this is something that the Holy Spirit has really dealt with me for this past week. Amen. I saw in the spirit a vision. And there was a person with a mask. And that person took the mask off and revealed the true colors. Have you ever heard somebody say they're two-faced? They're two-faced, right? What does two-faced mean? They're one way over here and they're one way over here. That's not good. No, no. That's not good to be two-faced. You know, people know when you're sincere and people know when you're fake. Okay? They do. People know. <laughs> Thank God. But that's not what's important. What's important is God knows and sees all. He knows our hearts. He knows the truth. He knows everything about us. If he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb, he knows everything. He knows our thoughts. He knows our feelings, okay? You know, if, when we're wrong, you know, I talked about emotions earlier. When we're wrong, we're supposed to love them. And I said, dude, you're supposed to like them. If you're in a situation where you've been hurt and it's repeated, we talked about it in Bible study. We talked about it and it kind of came humorous at a minute. Like you're in relationships and it's one after another bad thing happening. <laughs> Hello, get out of that situation. Amen. Get out of it. Because you don't have to sit there and take punishment and someone abusing you or lying on you or saying untrue things about you and gossip. Come on. Don't be around it. But do love that person. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Make sure you recognize when there's a mask involved. If you see a mask, know there's someone underneath there <laughs> that has two faces. And beware. What does God talk about? He talks about being wise, right? Be wise who you pick as a friend. Be wise in who you pick as a confidant. Be wise. You want to make sure who you're dealing with is the real deal. Amen. We learn lessons from people all the time. I don't want to be a lesson. I want to be a confidant. Amen. I want to be someone who says, I know her. She's the real deal, holy field. Amen. 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 Don't y'all want to be a part of that? Absolutely. You know, it, it, <laughs> I just really and truly, I mean, this was on me so strong. And I was just telling Ben, I was just like, man, if I'm going to talk, it's helping me. And I hope I help you understand, you know, we are to love. Amen. So coming to another scripture, Colossians 3, 14, verse 14. <coughs> And it says in this translation, for love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Love becomes the mark of true maturity. You know, when we become mature in the Lord, and each day we go and we study the word and we keep on being in his will, it gets easier. It's kind of what we call a habit. When you create a habit of That's loving true. someone, it becomes easy, right? right? So we want to make sure that we're always in love, that we go each day in love with strangers. If you see someone and they're not smiling, hey, you don't know what that person's going through. Right. Hug them. I love you. I, I, man, I'm so happy to see you today. Like, I'm happy to see all of you. Put a smile on. I'm happy. I call you blessed. Amen. Amen. It will change them immediately. When you become when you become mature in the Lord, like the scripture says, it's talking about being there, growing in the word. You want to grow in the word every day. Yes. Amen. 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 We don't want to stay here. We want to level up. 
Level up to the next level. That's what we want to do. That's what it's all about. Next verse is Luke 6, 31. Man, I'm blessed. I get to see every one of y'all's pretty faces. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for people that we get to come to this church and love people and praise and worship Amen. with these people yes. in this church. This church is a family. Amen. 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 I'm so happy to see everybody. Amen. Yes, me too. Absolutely. All right, Luke 6, verse 31. Some people know this scripture by the golden rule. You know what the golden rule says? Treat others. However you wish to be treated by others is how you should treat everyone else. Amen. 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 We teach our kids this from a little bitty age. But we have some folks out here who don't apply that. They don't apply that in their lives. I'm not judging. I'm just saying, if you don't want someone doing something to you, don't do it to them. If you don't want gossip and slander and wrongdoings and all these things, don't do it to somebody else. Amen? Amen. 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 Next verse. This is Jesus talking. This is red letters that I'm about to read in Matthew 5. Verse 44. <clears throat> However, I say to you, love your enemy. Bless the ones who curse you. Do something wonderful for the one who hates you. And respond to the very ones who persecute you. Mm -hmm. This is powerful, y'all. This goes back to when I first started. We have emotions. We get upset. We have hurt. We have disappointments. What do we do? We love them yes. and we pray for them. That's what we are to do. We don't walk around mad and, oh, I'm a, I don't get mad. I get even. Oh, no. no, we don't do that. We don't, we don't say, I got you. I'm going to get you back. No, we don't do these things. Why don't we do them? It gets us nowhere. It doesn't get us anywhere when we talk about these things and say, we're going to do that. Instead, love them and pray for them. Amen. Because guess what? The Lord will bless you. That's right. The Lord will bless you. He, like I said, the Lord knows our hearts. He will bless you for blessing others and praying for them. Amen. I'm going to close with this. Matthew 18, verse 22. Eighteen, 18 I'm sorry. It's going to be Matthew 18, 21 through 22. <clears throat> so I'm going to read them before Scripture so you understand. It says, Later Peter approached Jesus and said, How many times do I forgive my fellow believer who keeps offending me? Seven times? And Jesus answered, not seven times, Peter, but 70 times seven. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hello. Not, not seven, but 70 times seven. So yeah. guess what? This, this talks so much to me as I was studying the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, God, you're good. All the time. All the time he's good. Amen. Forgive those who do you wrong. Amen. Forgive them. Forgive them. Remain in love with a good heart. The Lord will come through. So my message is about always love, pray, and forgive. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give it up for that word. Come on, come on. We serve a mighty God. We serve an incredibly mighty God. Amen. Amen. Leslie told me, I mean, I'll be up there like two or three minutes. 
<laughs> that was pretty good, man. I was like, I was like sitting there. I'm like, if she keeps going, I'm just gonna like, hey, we're gonna say the altar call. We're gonna go home, man. We're gonna eat. Man, I tell you what. Okay, I'd like to first between her and me speaking, I'd like to pray real quick. I'd open like I. I we got to open with a word of prayer. I want to do that real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, yes. thank you yes. for that timely word on love. Yes. Thank you for convicting, convicting Pastor Leslie on that issue. Just yes. bring it to us. Yes. Lord, it spoke to her and it speaks to others right now, right here, yes. about love. Yes. Talked about emotion, Lord. Lord, you gave us a spirit man first yes. so we can be in one with the Holy Spirit and not have to be in that emotional, mm -hmm. physical cell. Thank you, Father. You knew what you were doing from the very, Maybe. very beginning. Yes. Oh, man, it's just, you're just crazy good, God. Yes. Oh, we love you for it. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you also that given me a word separately to talk about what I'm going to be talking about right now. Yes. But I'm going to say right now, let me sit down. Yes. Holy Spirit, get up. Yes, God. I can be less so you can be more. Amen. Yes. And that these two messages touch the body. It's all about edifying, exhorting, and comforting the body. Yes. All your gifts, the fivefold ministry, the nine gifts that we just spoke about, Lord, they're all for your body. Yes. That we can feel the comfort and the peace that is you. Amen. And I pray over these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus name Amen. 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 Now, if you would, please turn to Psalms 139. Psalms 139. I'm going to be reading verses 16 through 18. Today's my message is about what God says about you. Okay? I'm sorry. Uh, 138 verses 16 through 18. The tie-in, an amazing thing, our God is just like, like I said, he's crazy good. Leslie came up and talked about love. Okay? Talked about forgiveness. Okay? I'm going to be talking about how the world will say one thing about you, but God says something different. So yes, we can forgive the hurt, but we can grow into where it's no longer hurt because those are lies about you. Those are lies about you. God says good things about you in all ways. Yes, amen. Amen. So if you would, Psalms 139, starting in 16, you know who, you know, you saw who you created me to be before I became me. Let me repeat that because nobody said anything. No amens, no nothing. Amen. You, God, saw who you created in me, created me to be before I became me. Amen. Okay, what does that mean? When you were born into this world and somebody said, man, that's an ugly baby. <laughs> that's not what God said about you. No, right. Man, that, that child can't learn nothing. He can't even say his ABC. That's a lie. God created you. He knew you before he created you. And he said good things about you. Amen. Before I ever, I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of my of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you were thinking of me. Come on. Come on. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Say God's every thought. God's every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. Amen. Wow. When I wake up each morning, you're still with me. Thank you. Amen. We don't we don't we don't worship a fly by night God. No. We worship a God that is there with us all the time. Amen. Now, how many of you, and you don't have to raise your hands, or do you know somebody that you've said this about yourself? I'm a mistake. I know I've said it. I'll raise my hand. Amen. I've said I'm a mistake. I remember a conversation with my mother. We were driving by Victoria Airport, and uh, 
I was born in November, and my parents got married in April. And I was like, oh, man, y'all got married in April? And she goes, yes, son. I was pregnant when, uh, when we got married. I was like, I wasn't even asking that. I was like seven or eight years old. But from that moment on, I, was, I wondered. I wondered, was I a mistake? Okay? No. How many of us can say, I'm a diabetic? How many of us can say, I have anxiety? I'm bipolar. I'm a thief. I'm a convict. I'm a prostitute. I'm addicted to drugs, pornography, cigarettes, alcohol. Stop saying that. Yes. When you say that, you take ownership of that, and that is not who you are in God. You Amen. are not a prostitute. Amen. You are not a drug addict. You are not addicted to alcohol. You are not a diabetic. Please. I'm not bipolar. I don't have anxiety because I have in the past, and I gave it to God because that's not the way he created me. Amen. Amen. We can say I'm a mistake, but God says, I don't make mistakes. That's right. That's right. Okay? So when you say those, or you say you proclaim those things, you're saying that God made a mistake. That is not the case. That is not what God did to you. Now, the second verse that we're going to go over is 1 Peter 2, 9. Actually, does anybody have an NIV Bible? I know we have the NIV Bible here. Does anybody have an NIV Bible in their hand? Okay, well, I gave you all an opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and read it. First, before we go to this next scripture, I wanted to talk about the anxiety, okay, for just a second. 1 Peter, 1 Peter 5, 7. I love how the NIV reads. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You can cross out anxiety and you can put anything else. You can give all those things we just talked about to him. Because I'm telling you right now, those are lies from the enemy. It's what the enemy wants you to think about yourself. Because he doesn't want you to think that you're a child of God. He doesn't want you to think that you have God DNA in you. Remember we talked about it last week in Genesis. He breathed in the spirit. He created our spirits from nothing. Then he breathed it in. His breath, his DNA entered the human body with our spirits at the same time. We have his DNA. Now the guy that you know, the guy that I know, does he make mistakes? No. Okay. Then I can understand that a platypus is a weird animal, but there's a reason that the platypus is a weird animal. Okay? <laughs> He doesn't make mistakes. He didn't make a mistake when any of you were born. When we were, I know I said they look up that scripture, but God's telling me to talk about something else real quick. We were at this youth camp, right? I just talked about Friday night. There was a pastor and his wife, and the woman was powerful. They used to go to Believers World Outreach. They are youth pastors, I believe, in Alvin or something like that. This woman, you look at her, okay? And you see the power, and you feel the Holy Spirit on her. She was born a crack baby. She was born a crack baby. When she first came to TBI to go to school there, her mother didn't, didn't say, see you later. Her mom was in a crack house smoking crack. The day that she went to Bible school, she followed the will of God in her life. And praise God, her mother got saved and oh, put the pipe down oh, and worships God now. So if you would, please turn to 1 Peter 2, 9. 1 Peter 2, 9. I'm reading again from the Passion Translation. But you are God's Chosen treasure. Are you hearing me? You are God's chosen treasure. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, the, the streets in heaven are, are the purest gold. In Revelation, it talks about the purest gold. 
It is, he wants to impart that kind of purity into you. I'm not going to talk about those particular scriptures. What I want to make sure is you understand all the, the jewels described in the gates of heaven, the gold on the streets, and you are his cho chosen treasure. Mm -hmm. He lives in that, but you are his chosen treasure. Wow. Amen. Amen. Priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. Why does he call us priests here? I'm going to do a little breakdown for you. Why does he call us priests? Okay, in the Old Testament, the priest is the one who interceded with God. We don't need an interceder now. That's right. We have direct access to God. We don't need to go talk to someone so they can pray for us. We can pray for ourselves. Yes, we pray for each other. Absolutely. And there's the gifts of the Holy Spirit that is available to anyone that accepts Him as their personal Savior. We have all those things. But we are priests because all we have to do is have a conversation with God. The veil was ripped when Jesus died on the cross. That's right. Okay? That's right. It was ripped. Why was it ripped? We didn't have to send somebody in there with a rope tied around them in case they were too much of a sinner and they'd have to pull them out dead. No, the, God doesn't live in a temple. God lives where? In your heart. Okay? He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you. Mm. He claims you as his very own. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He did this so you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. Thank you, Jesus. Folks, shame. Everybody, anybody in here feel shame once in a while? Maybe feeling shame right now, where you're at, okay? Believing the lies of the world. Guys, I might be up here preaching, but I, I'm as big a sinner as anybody in this room. I've seen it all. I've done it all. I gave it to God, and he redeemed me, okay? He did, but I still have to deal with those old thought processes. The devil doesn't pull out new tricks. I mean, if, if the devil puts a plate of liver in front of me, that's no temptation. I don't like liver. <laughs> I don't like liver. Well, well that's a temptation. That's not much of a temptation. Okay? But, he puts a prime rib. Prime rib. He puts a nice oyster tail. Butter. Good seal. Lobster. There you go. Lobster tail. I missed that word, but my wife knew what I was talking about. She knows my weakness, too. He puts that in front of me. There's the temptation, right? The devil uses that to shame you. Shame is not of God. Conviction is of God. God will tell you that's not the right move. You can drive, everybody can drive down the street and you realize, man, I shouldn't go that way. I should go this way. It's happened to me before. Happen where I'm like, ah, something's telling me not to go that way. That's conviction. Conviction comes with love. Shame comes with hate. Shame is of the devil. Jesus says there will be troubles. He said it time and time again in the New Testament. Now sometimes we cringe at this. Oh my gosh, there's going to be there going to be troubles. I mean, I became a Christian, so I wouldn't have any problems. <laughs> no, wrong. Let me ask you this. I mean, maybe you, maybe some of you have experienced this too. The day that you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, and you gave it all to Him, was the next month beautiful rainbows and butterflies? No, man, that's where the devil attacks. Man, when you're living in sin, he, he's not worried about you. Come on. He doesn't care what you're doing because... You're already doing the wrong thing and you're not living in Christ. That's right. When you make a decision to live in Christ and live with the Holy Spirit in you, that's when he's going to attack. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's when the anxiety is going to come in. That's when the depression is going to come in. That's, what, that's when he reminds me of all the things that I've done in my life. Right. Amen. He reminds right. me of every single one of those things because yep. he wants to bring me down. Right. He wants me to feel that way so I can get out of the relationship with Christ. Amen. He used that. 
Whenever that happens, guys, I want you to understand, when those things happen, there's going to be growth in your life. There's going to be something fantastic happen in your Amen. life. Amen. It's going to happen tomorrow. I can't promise that. But I know that God's got something good planned for you if the devil is attacking you. Thank you, Lord. Now, I, personally, this is a, yeah, I don't know what uh, song it is, okay? I'm, I'm sure Linda and, and Boyce can fill me in. But uh, I, was, I was just actually writing it down as they were singing it. I count the joy... Come every battle, because I know that's where you'll be. I count the joy come every battle, because I know that's where you'll be. We talked about it before, the best songs, the best hymn, hymnals, the hymns rather, the best praise and worship songs are songs based on Scripture. Amen. Right? That's right. You can understand and you can take it to the bank. When the battle's on, everybody everybody remembers that old the painting. Some of you younger people have seen it, but I don't remember back in the seventies the, the the footprints, footprints. Okay, and then you look back, the guy looks back, and he says, "Man, when I was going through all this trouble, there's only one set of footprints." Everybody remember that? Why was there only one set of footprints? Jesus was carrying you. That's what was happening. Come on, man. We talked about it at the beginning of service when Peter and Silas were in jail, right? Peter and, and, and Silas were in jail, and what did they do? They praised and worshipped Christ, and they yeah. prayed to Him. Because they knew when their battle is the worst, God would be there. Thank you, Lord. God will be there. If you would now please turn to... Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. And He chose us to be His very own, joining us to Himself even before he laid the foundation of the universe. Wow. Wow. So you're telling me God was sitting in this void. He hadn't decided. He, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus had not decided to create the universe, and he already knew my name? That's what the scriptures say about you. That's what the scriptures say about you. He knew you before he laid the foundation of the universe. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. I'll speak for myself. I don't feel unstained every day. I don't feel that way. Leslie talked about feelings and emotions when she was talking. Feelings and emotions will lie to you every single day. Yes. The devil will use feelings and emotions to get you in a place where he can attack you. Come on. Right? Right. Okay? You have to understand, you are of great value to him. We already read that he is, you are a treasure to him, his chosen treasure. So, I want to use this analogy. A $20 bill. Right? Still says in God we trust, thank God, on this. Okay? Well, we're going to pray over that right now. I, I proclaim right now that that's going to stay on there in Jesus' name. Yes. Okay? Now, if you walked outside and this was blowing down the street, you'd run after it, right? You'd grab it. Right? Right. Okay? <coughs> Now this twenty dollar bill rolling down the street, would you still run after it? It's crushed though. It, 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 it's 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 dirty. Dirty now. Kicking it around. Would you still run after it? 
Yes. Why? Because it maintains its value the whole time. Now, if my dog, little Nigel, came up and ran it, ran over here. I mean, I don't know how he'd chew this up and swallow, but if he swallowed this, I'd follow him around. <laughs> Come on. Who, who here wouldn't? That's $20. Come on. It's not a, it's not a dime. It's, a, it's $20. Come on, I'd follow that dog around. I'd go get him some x like to hurry it up. <laughs> and I'd wash it off and put it right back in my wallet. Because it has maintained its value the whole time. Mm, that's good. How many of you have been kicked around? How many of you felt like you've been in the gutter? Amen. How many of you feel like you're stained in your life? Amen. How many of you feel like you came out the back end of a dog? Amen. I have. You have still maintained your value to God the entire time. Woo. He will Amen. give you everything. Yeah. He sent His Son to the cross for you. Thank you, God. Even after everything you've done. Wow. Everything you've done. Every needle you put in your arm. Every time you laid with the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Every time you did it Come for on. the wrong reason. Come on. Every time you had that drink and you got in your car and drove and ended up hopefully alive back home, right? Yeah. Every time you've done that. Every, every time, time your your mama, your dad, your brothers, your sisters say you're a loser. Yeah. You're fat. You're stupid. Oh you're never going to amount to anything. Yeah. Your Heavenly Father says you're my child. Hey, hey, hey. Woo! I want y'all to think about that. The next time the devil lies to you, the next time the devil tells you you're something you're not, the de next time the devil tells you you're anything but a child of God, rebuke him right there, right then. I don't care who said it to you. Rebuke it, because that is not you. That's right. You are a child of God. Amen. Jesus died on the cross and, and absolved you of all your sin with your repentance in Jesus' name. He lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit is in you. you if you would, please stand. Mm -hmm. Bow your heads and close your eyes, everyone, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for always seeing my true value even when I don't. Thank you for seeing my brothers and sisters as the chosen treasure that they are. Lord, you have always been there. It, it said when we wake up, you are still there, Father. You never left us. There is no yet in you because it is always going to come to pass, Lord, yes. with you. Yes. You've given us an opportunity to grow closer with you, Lord, and to live eternally with you in your kingdom as your chosen treasure, as jewels and gold are all around us. We are your chosen treasure. We are the heirs to you, Lord. So two opportunities, folks, two opportunities today for those that have never accepted, <coughs> pardon me, ex accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. First and foremost, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this has nothing to do with me. This is just your admission to Him right now. Your admission to Him right now, folks. Your admission to Him that... You have given it to Him right here and right now. Please look up at me at this moment. Amen. 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 Second, if you have given your life to Christ and you feel like that dirty $20 bill running down the street and you're tired of it and you know that God already paid the price, Jesus paid the price for you and cleaned you off. You are spotless yes. in Jesus' name, right? Yes. If you have given your life to Him and you've gone back to that 
Lord, right now, if you have any of you have that in you and you want to give it back to God, let him have the wheel back. Please look up at this time. So we're going to pray together out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I, admit I admit that I have, I am a sinner, I am a sinner, sinner and I give it all to you. I, give it all to you. I believe that Jesus Christ, I believe that Jesus Christ died, on died on the cross, shed his blood for me. Lord, I give you my sin. I admit to you that I have failed you. But I now hear the truth. I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as they sing the, the closing song, uh, we're going to have a couple announcements afterward. Leslie and I will be here in the front if you want further prayer, need prayer for any other reason, please come to the front and pray with Leslie and I.